Hello there, Flip here, and today we will be adding another victim to the Genshin Court series because there's quite literally nothing else to talk about Genshin related until we get this bitch who's rocking that straight Minecraft hairstyle. But, anyways, the one we'll be sentencing will be a streamer and YouTuber called erotic warus <laughs> i am gonna need some backstory for that name chief in what dimension did you decide to confidently name yourself erotic warus i'm not even trying to be mean i'm just genuinely curious is this a subtle way of him telling us that he's a furry because i don't know what else to think Anyways, for those of you who don't know what the Genshin Core is or what it entails, the TLDR of it is that I'll be trialing certain Genshin content creators based on their takes on characters or the game in general and give them a fitting sentence accordingly. But before we do that, as always, standard YouTube practices. If at any point during the video you're entertained, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing so we can clown on more Genshin takes in the future. And back to. I'm calling him Walrus. He's a Genshin content creator which I don't really know how to feel all that well about. His game knowledge seems to be more than the likes of Vars, but similar to Vars, it's as if he just flat out ignores theory crafting done or goes in with certain character biases. A few months ago, he made a video on why Electro needs a buff, which I heavily disagree on. I even made a video to debunk most of those claims, which you can check out here. And he kept bringing up Kaching when talking about Electro, which leads me to believe that he doesn't want Electro to be buffed because it's a bad element, but because he wants Kaching to get buffed, so he has to push a narrative of Electro being bad so the element gets buffed and Kaching can stay as she is. <laughs> Wait, actually, I did a quick search and that might actually be the case. This is further cemented in the first piece of evidence we'll be taking a look at. Uh, you'll see. Sup, sup, flappers. Don't you dare ever again call me a flapper. That is pure verbal assault. I'm a flipper. Let's just get this out of the way. Raiden Shogun at C0, she's good, but she's not great. I think that phrase sums up Raiden C0 so well. C0 Raiden is a top 10 character. This might actually be the first time I've seen someone underrate Raiden to this degree. All the other content creators wank Raiden, which I still think is wrong, as it does ignore some of her issues like her e-scaling being some of the worst in the game, and she isn't a universal battery like many people say she is. Like all other characters, she has her set teams. Trying to fit Raiden in a team just because it lacks energy is most likely going to be a detriment and you can solve ER issues in other ways, like with Favonius weapons. And I don't think anyone is going to argue with me on this one. I mean, at least anybody who has played a C0 Raiden, has built a C0 Raiden. I, I can wholeheartedly, honestly sit here and tell you that I've tried my best to build C0 Raiden to be somebody who's worthy of her field time. She's level 80. The fuck do you mean you tried your best? Also, what team is that? Bro couldn't decide <laughs> whether he wanted Raiden National or Hyper Raiden and decided to go with both. Another thing is that even if he wanted to play this team, he's doing the rotation completely wrong. What am I watching? <laughs> this is worse than Vars' gameplay. Are you sure Raiden is underperforming or can he just not play the game or build proper team comps for her? But what I'm trying to say is Raiden Shogun at C0 struggles to output enough damage to justify the amount of time she needs to be on field, which is the time she uses her burst skill. And while her burst skill does more than just damage, yes, there's a utility aspect to it that regens energy particles for the rest of her team. I am not saying that is useless, but hear me out. There are also options to replacing her if you're just talking about energy regeneration here, right? Let's be honest, people. Same elemental type characters have great batteries. It's not like before Raiden came into our world, we had no way to regenerate particles for the rest of our parties. How do you go from making one of the most base takes I've heard to an extreme amount of reaching to downplay Raiden? I'm someone who downplays C0 Raiden a lot. I hate how overrated she is. But saying that her C0 performance suffers because there are other ways to battery is just disingenuous. Let's look at Raiden National since it's one of the most popular teams right now so a lot of you can relate to it. On this team your Jingcho no longer needs to run Sacrificial or Favonius. You would actually give him a premier 5 star sword or lion's roar for this team as assuming he still has around 160 ER he can comfortably burst off cooldown. 
likewise with Zhang Ling. This is a really simple writing concept, which sounds redundant to explain as it should be common sense, but if you are overcapping on energy with Zhang Ling, it's a good thing as you can now tweak your artifacts to have better offensive stats for the Raiden team. It's her damage output at C0 that is the main problem. And to be more specific for you guys, it's her damage ceiling. It's capped. You just can't really get that much higher without, let's say, like if you have an R5 engulfing lightning with the most cracked out artifact sets you can get. Yeah, she can still do decent damage. You see, like this is the point where we really have to reevaluate what we're talking about here like with that kind of itemization for a character you're dealing decent damage but if you have the same thing and let's say you have a c2 right and immediately you are broken beyond belief I kind of just don't get what Wars is trying to say here. Raiden Hyper even at C0 is still a really good comp. Does it get a vast improvement at C2? Yes it does, but how does that in any way invalidate C0 Raiden's damage? Constellations are an upgrade to a character's damage. Who would have thought? So here's the tricky thing right about this character is that she does something amazing which is she charges everybody's energy and along with her elemental skill provides decent off-field damage support in the electro element but at the same time a lot of people don't really want that electro element to, to, to support them right only superconduct <laughs> i think everyone knows what i'm gonna say by now at this point him saying this is also ironic because every good Raiden team banks on the fact that she's electro Raiden national would lose so much damage if it didn't have electro charge as you would be proking less transformatives at C0, Raiden Hyper with Kazaha, Overload makes up upwards of 20% of the damage. Every team Raiden is good on benefits from her being Electro. I now may as well pronounce Electro as my wife at this point, which means I can make this meme. Once again, let me reiterate, it's not the character's fault, it's their element. The element of Electro is holding back a lot of these characters. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth! Alright, that'll be it for this piece of evidence. Funnily enough, I think this cycles back to my first point, which is the reason he doesn't like Raiden so much and is trying to downplay her, is because one of the things Raiden did was cement Kaching as dog shit. So in order for this not to be true, he has to call Raiden C0 DPS bad. It's not even worth giving a sentence for this, you'll just be fine for my eye removal appointment as I'd rather not have eyes than watch whatever the fuck your gameplay is. Now let's move on to the next piece of evidence, which highlights another thing that a rot Walrus seems to do a lot, which would just be ignoring or just not understanding basic theory crafting concepts, which isn't inherently bad if you're a casual, but with Walrus, <laughs> you'll see what I mean. Ayato is a well-rounded character and I'm going to go into detail more in the video, but I do think he is worth looking into a little more than just, is he a must pull, right? Because I don't think anyone is a must pull and we should really stop with the mindset that any character deserves to be on this must pull tier list. It doesn't exist. It's a fantasy. I'm actually going to just be leaving this here because this was a very good take. Going back to this is that it's a very well-rounded kit that adds nicely to what this character ultimately does, which is damage and utility and uh, kind of support. So in a way, I do feel like a grid comparison to make with Ayato is kind of like Hu Tao. There what? <laughs> Excuse me? elemental skills but the thing is Hu Tao is single target and she does a lot of it our Ayato cannot keep up in Hu Tao when it comes to single target when it comes to group enemies Ayato of course takes the cake and at the same time in exchange for power he is able to hit more than one enemy very easily whereas Hu Tao really has to skewer all her enemies into one go which uh, is incredibly difficult to do in certain scenarios and of course fighting uh, more elite monsters you just can't dash through them you kind of get stuck on them so you end up really hitting just one unit. So in exchange for that, Ayato is able to hit many enemies. However, I do think Ayato has the better trade-off here, being the Hydro element as well. So of course, his infusion window is also much shorter. This is another thing that Erotic Walrus does a lot. Sometimes he quite literally just says nothing. He mentioned Ayato and Hu Tao are comparable, then failed to list a single comparison besides they infused their weapon. What was the point of this statement? 
he can play vaporize he can play freeze he can play electro charge now granted some of these are going to be better than other options but uh, to be quite frank with you a big problem with vaporize with ayato my original fear was they're going to put some sort of unreasonably high internal cooldown on ayato but i've come to find that due to his fast hydro attacks along with his burst skill and his normal slashes being hydro it just there's no pyro character or, or pyro application for that matter that is fast enough to keep up with it okay thank you walrus with this take you have just cemented that you don't know anything about elemental gauge theory and you probably learned what icd is through oimia and i don't want you guys to take this as everyone should know about elemental gauge theory because it's not that important to be fair and there are generally a lot of people that just have no fucking clue what it is. But when you have a big platform and then go on to talk about elemental reactions without knowing how elemental reactions work, you aren't doing much good to the general community. And stuff like this is why people to this day still think child vaporizes with Zhang Ling. So let me be of service and give the most bare bones explanation of why trying to make Aito do forward vaporize will never work. Likewise for things like Mel Tu Tao. Multiplicative reactions like Melt and Vape, you have a forward reaction, which is where you boost your damage by two times, so Hydro onto Pyro or Pyro onto Cryo. And then you have reverse reactions, where it's the opposite and it gives you a 1.5 times multiplier to your damage. Also, every elemental attack in this game not only applies an element, but a unit of that element, which is essentially how strong the element is on an enemy. Normal and charge attack infusions as well as elemental skills and bursts that attack multiple times will usually apply one unit, whereas attacks that are big hits like child's burst or other like one-off skills and bursts, they apply two units of an element. If you do a reverse vaporize reaction with one unit of hydro and one unit of pyro, the one unit of pyro will only take uh, essentially half of the hydro unit away meaning you can apply another unit of pyro after that as well so the hydro aura will essentially be on the enemy for longer so you can chain reverse reactions the problem is that forward reactions are not designed to be chained if you apply one unit of cryo and then one unit of pyro the pyro unit will just eat the cryo unit and even if you have an ability that applies two units of cryo that one pyro unit will just eat both of the cryo units Theoretically, if we get Jing Zhou and turn him into a cryo, we'll call him Jing, Jing Yu, he wouldn't be able to enable forward melt for pyro characters like Hu Tao, because these reactions are quite literally not designed to be chained intentionally, and then you have to take into account ICDs, and you just realize how unrealistic this is. I've also been generalizing like a lot, if you want a more comprehensive look into elemental gauge theory, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Jesus fucking Christ, that was a mouthful. TLDR Walrus doesn't know how reactions work. Let's carry on. Overall, I find that his kit is well-rounded in all aspects. Of course, we also have the Electro Charge team, so I won't go into details regarding the teams. I'm actually curious as to this guy's beef with Electro. What did it do to him? He talks about forward vaporize Ayato for a good two minutes, even though it doesn't work. Then proceeds to talk about Ayato's freeze team, which is pretty good. But he doesn't even give Taser Ayato the time of day, when Taser and Super are currently the best teams to slow Ayato on. Ayato just normal attacks so fucking fast that he can consistently proc Beidou's discharges. Supported by his high normal attack damage and wide AoE Hydra application for constant EC, and then for Ayato's soup teams, which would include Bennett, Fischl, and Kaza or Venti, this just banks on a lot of transformatives through Electro Charge taking place, making a very consistent and high damage output team. Alright, that's all for this piece of evidence. Let's round out this furry sentence. Walrus, you're a content creator that lets a clear bias skew your decisions and recommendations, and for that, you will get a year sentence, and will also be banned from looking at Kachin content for the next 24 hours. If you show any withdrawal symptoms, we don't give a fuck. It means you're going back to normal. Kachin is mid. Also, for unresearched testing, that will net you another two years for a total of a three year sentence. Take him away. Court is now closed. Well, there we go, that's Erotic Walrus done. All in all, I don't think he's that bad. I had to watch a lot of his videos to get the two I used because most of his videos are just minor misconceptions or opinions that just aren't worth delving that deep into. His takes can either be really based or just completely miss the mark to where you say Aito is comparable to Hu Tao. I also just really don't appreciate when content creators who claim to talk about meta and then hand out team recommendations don't even know the basics of how elemental reactions work. Your whole argument for a certain topic falls flat when you don't even know the foundation of the argument you're standing on. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. 
If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on what you think about Walrus, as I'd love to hear it, and I respond to almost every single comment. Once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.